Hello and welcome to my new YouTube channel, Pop-Up Sports. And before we go on, can you do me a favor? Click the little subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. I'll wait for you. Thanks. I, you don't know how happy that makes me. Next on the list are my own San Diego Padres. Yes, I've been a fan since day one, 1969. 50 years of rooting for the San Diego Padres. Uh, they don't have the history of other teams. Like, it was tough for picking Yankees' greatest players of all times because they have so many great players. The Padres have a few great players, and a lot of guys you're not going to go, who? But they're my team, they're our players, and I'm doing the best I can of rating these players. But here we go. We'll start with our the greatest Padre of all time and one of the greatest hitters in the history of baseball, Mr. Tony Gwynn. Uh, can't say enough good things about Tony Gwynn. He had a three thirty eight batting average. 3,141 hits, eight batting titles, Hall of Famer, Gold Glover. He could have gone either, he could have taken more money to go somewhere else, but he decided to stay a Padre from start to finish. I think I speak for most Padre fans. We love him. It was a joy to watch him play. You went to the game just to watch Tony Gwynn play because there was a lot of times the team was pretty bad, but watching him play was just. Again, it was, it was watching one of the greatest hitters of all time. Uh, next up in the outfield is Dave Winfield. Yeah, he did, made most of his success was when he, after he left the Padres, but he had a pretty good career with the Padres. 154 HRs, 1,134 hits. He's a Hall of Famer, a great outfielder, and he also never played the minors. He was drafted by the Padres and went straight to the Major League. I think he was also drafted by baseball and football. Also, so he's drafted by three sports. Uh, again, went with Dave Winfield. The third outfielder is Steve Finley. Uh, he had great power numbers for the Padres. Gold glove outfielder. Uh, took him, help, Helped take him to the World Series in 1998. Only played about three and a half, four seasons with the Padres. Uh, again, it's tough because they don't have a long history of great players. There, there could be other players you could put in there and put it in the comment section. Ah, Steve Finley doesn't belong there. Maybe Greg Vaughn, uh, Ricky Henderson you could put in there. But I went with Steve Finley just because of the World Series appearance, and he, he was just a solid, solid player. Uh, first base, again, you could go with some different players, but I'm going with old Nate Colbert, 163 HRs of Padre. He had a double hitter in 1972 against the Braves. He had five homers and 13 RBIs in a double hitter. Just an amazing stat. And a lot of people think, okay, he only had 163 HRs, but back when San Diego Stadium first opened up, they had a 17-foot wall. You had to hit it over that wall. I don't. I would say probably the year he had 38 homers, he did it twice. He probably would have had about 58 homers or even could have broken Roger Maris's record at the time uh, with uh, 61 homers because – of the wall, but anyway, I'm going with Nate Colbert. There's other players you could probably put on that list, but I'm going with Nate Colbert. Second base has been kind of a black hole for the Padres, you know, the whole time. Uh, if they wouldn't have traded Roberto Alomar, worst trade in, in uh, Padre history, in my opinion, I would have definitely had him on the list. But I went with Alan Wiggins, um, mainly because of the World Series year '84, 70 stolen bases, 106 runs scored. He also went moved from the outfield to second base the start of that season, and that helped the Padres. And also it helped Tony Gwynn have an average, I believe, of 370 because they were so worried about uh, Allen Wiggins' speed at first base. So I'm going to Allen Wiggins. You could you could have gone with, uh, like I said, if they hadn't traded Carlos Berga or there, there's other players you could have gone with, but there's not a lot of great players at second base for the San Diego Padres. Third base, I went with Ken Caminiti. I know it's a steroid area, but I'm not I'm not excluding players from the steroids in this list. Uh, he was the National League MVP in 1996. Great defense. Uh, big reason for the Padres making the World Series, the playoffs in 96, obviously, and in 98 making the World Series. Uh, I love Ken Caminiti, uh, but I'm going to put him on the list. Now, if Manny Machado, once Manny Machado's career is done with the Padres, he'd probably be the guy they would – I would put there, but as of now, going with Ken Caminiti. Shortstop, probably would have gone with Fernando Tatis once his career is over because the guy's an amazing young player, but I'm going with Gary Templeton. Took the Padres to the World Series in 84. He had 1,135 hits of the Padres, 195 doubles. He really cemented the position at a shortstop. Bad knee probably kept him from being the player he was when he was younger. But yes, we're going with Gary Templeton at shortstop. Uh, could have gone with Ozzie Smith, but... 
Templeton played longer and, and had a better career with the Padres than Ozzie Smith. Ozzie Smith made his career with St. Louis. Uh, next up, Terry Kennedy. I was going back and forth between him and Benito Santiago. But again, he helped the Padres get to the World Series in 1984. He had 424 RBIs and 76 homers as a Padre. And he was, and he was a solid player and, and helped build that young team. Uh, going to starting pitching, I'm going with Jake Peavy. Uh, career record with the Padres, 92-68. and 68, 2007 Cy Young Award winner and an ERA of 329 that year. Uh, yeah, I, Jake Peavy was, was a uh, good pitcher for the Padres, and that's where we're going with him. Next up, my favorite Padre of all time, Randy Dandy Jones. From 75 to 76, he was the best pitcher in the game. Uh, he won the Cy Young in 1976 with a 22-14 and 14 record. You're thinking, and that was with a terrible Padre team. They, they were bad. Uh, he had 25 complete games in one season. I don't think the Padres have had 25 complete games since. I'm just exagger- exaggerating. But, and he also had 315 innings pitched that year. If he wouldn't have torn up his arm... He, he probably would have made the Hall of Fame. He was that good. Pete Rose said that he was the toughest pitcher he ever faced. Uh, final starting pitcher, I'm going to go with Kevin Brown. He only pitched for the Padres for one season, but he's the main reason they went to the World Series that year. He made all the other starting pitchers better. 18-7, and seven, ERA of 2.38, just his total attitude on the mound, and he set a great example at it helped the Padres, and again, they made the World Series because of him. So he he rounds out my third uh, pitcher. There could be other pitchers. I could have went Gaylord Perry, won a Cy Young Award. Uh, Bruce Hurst had some good years with the Padres, but I'm going with Kevin Brown. If you disagree, put it in the comment section. Uh, next up, relief pitcher, Trevor Hoffman. Oh, my God. It was it was a, a, almost like Tony Gwynn. You went to the game hoping to get uh, Trevor time, which they would play ACDC's Hales Bells. It was electric. It was amazing. He had 601 career saves. In 1998, the World Series year, he had 53 saves, an ERA of 1.48, and he is a Hall of Famer. So we And also, he had, he had hurt himself a few times, and he, he, de- he developed a changeup because he was more of a power pitcher when he first came up. But no, Trevor Hoffman reinvented himself, and he's definitely... Uh, top on my list. Second relief pitcher went back and forth with it. Could have went with Raleigh Fingers. Could have went with um, Mark Davis, who won a Cy Young Award with the Padres as a relief pitcher, or uh, Goose Gossage. But I started to go with Heath Bell. 132 saves in three years as a Padre, three time All Star. And 2010, he had a 1.93 ERA. Uh, yeah, so again, back and forth. But Heath Bell was very dominant. And he's also a good setup man for Trevor Hoffman in a couple years before he became the main closer. And manager, two choices, Dick Williams or Bruce Bochy. I went with Bruce Bochy just because he was he had a winning percentage of 494 with the Padres. Uh, 975 wins as a Padre manager. He took him to the playoffs in 96, the World Series in 98. Made most of his news. He's going to be a Hall of Fame manager because of what he did with the Giants. Yep, Bruce Bochy is my choice for greatest Padre manager of all time. There you have it. Uh, again, it was tough because, like I said, a lot of the players that had great careers were traded by the Padres. Uh, could have went Gary Sheffield, um, Fred McGriff, Adrian Gonzalez. Uh, set, like I said, the hardest part was second base. But that's my list. Let me know what you think. If you like what we're doing, subscribe. Give us thumbs up. And also, get in the comment section. Let us know what you think and you could agree or disagree. But that's my list. Until next time. I'm out of here. Bye.